such a big bus and then so many developers come to our ecosystem. But I think this year, like back to 2016, 17, we do see there are uh, some uh, segment and there are some needed requirement from different use case. We do believe the mobile platform, the mobile VR, is one of the most uh, disruptive way to consume the VR content. So, if you think about uh, when we launch Vive, we hear so many developers, so many customers. I personally demo over to thousand people with VR. So, there's uh, some uh, questions about, hey, how about the wire? Uh, you need to set up. Uh, 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 you need to set up base stations. Wow, this PC is expensive. I, I need to spend a couple hundred dollars to buy a, a high-end credit card. And at that time, smartphone has been eight years. Like so many people want to adopt smartphone, especially in China, they have some innovation jump. So they they just enter the space without and uh, with lots of PC uh, adoption. So that's why in early this year we also launched our uh, first focus by focus. It is a mobile VR device. However, we know there's some uh, pros and cons for the mobile platforms. Like the PC, you get really a powerful uh, a graphic card, so you can do extremely immersive content to the to the users. For the mobile devices, you see the, the portability, you see the convenience. You can use everywhere, anytime. You're in the bedroom, you're living room, you go to your friend's house, you can enjoy it. So we keep thinking, how can we combine all this advantage together to bring the experience to the user? When they're in the living room, they can enjoy not only the 2D content, but also the 3D content. So lots of people doesn't believe in the 3D movie, but in reality, if you use VR class to try the 3D, you will love it. And of course, the 360 VR contents that's coming to the field. And that's also a new way to, to tell the story. I, I met with a couple of directors, and even in Taiwan, we have worked with many directors to see how can we use 360 to, to do the best uh, storytelling. And of course, uh, I think the video consumption is one, and uh, probably the most important uh, behavior entertainment behavior in the living room. However, if you see the young generation, gaming is getting more and more important, even higher than uh, entertainment content. So we do believe in the living room, the interactive content is very important. It's a key use case. But with VR, you can have all of them together. So with the VR devices, with the fiber cable or with the home network with a good enough CPE with uh, L2.11 AD, the user can really enjoy the VR with very high speed data connection to consume all type of experiences. So we think the VR can provide additional uh, differentiation for the carriers, for the IP, uh, for the IPTV uh, operators to provide a different choice for the users. Since people get to use, okay, I have a TV already, I got a tablet already, I got a smartphone already. And then we have VR can provide them the whole different user scenario, user experiences in the living room. So this is what we can provide in our Vive experiences. We have our content studios, we have we can we have first party content, we have second party content, we also have our own studios to make not only the gaming but also the art, education, and also the uh, VR stories. We just announced the Seven Miracles, which gets uh, uh, Rain Dance, the best VR film festival. And it is the experimental uh, six star walking VR experiences as well. So you can see the, the, the real scenario and then walk inside into the story. We also have the store, the Vibe we have more than 2,000 contents. So I think it's a perfect use case when we uh, connect with Iconic Engine, we can be a very good
content library for the users when they want to try the interactive contents. And for the video contents, well, I think there's existing more than 10,000 contents from Netflix, from the IPTV, carriers. There are so many video play contents. So we can provide the same amount of interactive content for the living room experiences. For the platform, we have a wide, wide platform. So when you have the XR devices, when you connect it to your uh, home base, uh, home basement, I think you can experience this, all the content from the, uh, from the from the server. But when you bring your device to your friend's house, to your uh, bedroom, you can still enjoy the contents locally, uh, running powered by five way platform. And of course, we have our hardware. We have our hardware systems. We have many many partners to work together with us to bring our system to the uh, to the field. So in the long term, I think Vive Reality, our CEO has talked this a lot. We want to bring the VR AR together with the 5G. That's the connection. And of course, in the server side, you need a, you need an augmented uh, artificial intelligence to support. But I think in the short term, before 5G really going to the live, we do see the home uh, the home basement, uh, the broadband network. Like in Japan, I talked to the partners. They have confidence. They have very good uh, optical fiber to everybody's home. They have super uh, uh, good uh, networking infrastructure to to help the virtual reality come true even earlier before 5G uh, commercialized. Our vision for the VR for the XR is unleash human imaginations on the limitations of reality. So I think in the short term, we would like to work with all carriers to bring our system uh, together to bring the VR experiences to the living room, to the end users, to bring our Vive reality uh, to the field as early as possible. This is, thank you uh, for listening to me today. And, and, uh, and, and I'll thank you this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So again, one more piece of the puzzle, right, for uh, operators, you know, to go to market, right? Um, you know, Iconic Engine with, uh, you know, a, a tailored operator uh, experience, Vive, you know, with a Vive port, 2,000 applications, Wave SDK, and, and other uh, ways to scale, you know, the offering uh, to uh, the operators. And then um, next uh, on stage uh, is uh, Henry from Pico. Uh, Henry and I started working, actually, uh, Henry was my first customer uh, in VR. Uh, he, uh, he, he, you know, a few years ago came to Qualcomm and said, hey, you know, I like VR, I like mobile VR, but I wanted to do something that doesn't depend on a smartphone. And we said, all right, let's give it a try. And actually, you know, today I think they're, they're very uh, successful, getting a lot of traction, um, working as well with the Vive uh, uh, the Wave SDK. Uh, so you see all these pieces coming uh, together. And, and Henry is actually getting good traction with many operators worldwide. And therefore, um, we invited him to, to come here and talk a little bit about his offering and how he can contribute in this effort uh, to operators. Thanks, Henry. Please welcome. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so pleasure to have a team here. Thank you, uh, your introduction. And uh, let me do a quick introduction about the people. So, in fact, the Pico is a very new company. So we have three year history, but the front starting as we will talk about. From the starting of Pico, we focus on the mobile VR. I think uh, Pico uh, in 2016, when we released the first generation VR device, Pico Neo DK, I think that's the first VR on one use Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. Right now, so Pico still focus on VR, AR, and the 3D sensing interactive, interactive technology. So in the past three years, we released several project product. I think that so far is, I think it's very successful. So the the product uh, uh, we have uh, two product. Line. One is we name Gabi. 
So Garmin is a, a straight down time tracking and controller tracking uh, entry level product. So in uh, August uh, this year, we just uh, released the Pico Garmin 2, the second generation uh, Pico uh, Garmin product. So far, it sells very well, even uh, in the, the consumer market, also, also the business, the customer. Uh, so far, from the date, it should be the best sell in China, uh, we are in one market. Also, we have another uh, product line named NEO. NEO is our uh, hand and head setup controller solution. So we named it is uh, Pico NEO. Right now, Pico have uh, 300 uh, employees worldwide. Our uh, more than 80% is engineering. Our office based in Beijing, Qingdao, Tokyo, and San Francisco. In fact, uh, we are working a lot of customers, including the, the operator worldwide. So uh, the operator like Pico, because Pico provide really competitive uh, hardware system and good support. Uh, in this uh, two year, 2019, 2020, we believe fancy and AI will speed increase the, the VR and the AI market. And also, Pico will spend more resources involved in this market. Uh, here we list several products. Uh, you can see in the next year, we will have several products with AI, with Qualcomm chipset, it's including the VR only one, AR only one, and AR camera. So, uh, especially so, AR we think that next year, uh, 2019 Q2, people's the, the first generation in AR only one device will, will be in the market. It's based on Snapdragon A45. So also, uh, we are working with the operator, we are work, working with Qualcomm for the next year, we are planning a product of the the new tool. New tool will support 5G connection directly. It will help our, our customer, our operator, uh, customer partner, they can use this device, can connect with 5G radio station directly. I think it will be helpful to build their future ability, especially in 2019 list time. So, anyway, so we think we are and they are will be have a very big future. Pico will focus on the all-in-one we are and the AR device. We we are working with Coco with the operator, the customer together to create new business for we are and the AR. Thank you. Okay, and uh, just a couple more slides and to conclude, I think we uh, went through uh, you know a few of our partners so that operators can start embracing uh, VR and XR in the home, and and we see that 5G is going to be the continuation of this journey. Operators have a chance to start with XR in the home. Right, it's something available today. I mean, you saw everyone here on stage showing that you know you don't need to wait anymore. Uh, now the thing is, once 5G becomes available, all the same offering that you started in the home can be brought anywhere. Right, the same kind of business models and content that was developed for the home offering, you can take it um, anywhere. Yesterday, you know, in Cristiano's keynote, you saw next VR talking about you know, a six-stop video, way more uh, better, higher resolution uh, video uh, formats. So I think 5G will be great for broadcast streaming and um, enable volumetric six-stop uh, video and as well uh, enable a split processing between what you do on the HMD, on the glass, uh, on, on VR and AR, and the cloud. There was another presentation here uh, by one of my colleagues talking about boundless XR, boundless photoristic, uh, photorealistic XR, which basically is uh, what we're talking about, distributed computing, uh, that distributed processing that 5G will enable. So again, um, I think uh, mobile XR is transforming uh, the entertainment industry. Uh, we can start now with the home, 
And as 5G gets developed, we take what we uh, build in the home uh, to everywhere. Thanks everyone uh, for the uh, attention today. And please uh, contact uh, me, anyone from the uh, guests that, that were brought, uh, so that we build this together. Thank you.